Good morning, guys. All right. I'm in a better mood today because I made it through yesterday and it was not terrible, right? So I'm in I'm in better spirits today. I feel like fear of the unknown is usually what gets you. That's what was getting me. As you can see, I'm a different person today. As to be expected with me. Like I told the girl at my job, I'm like, listen, the hair's gonna change like this. But what I forgot was I had on my short hair yesterday, but then I have this tattoo on my neck and I'm just like, Granted, I don't think they're going to trip trip, but I try to be professional as possible. So I don't think I'll be wearing that short wig anymore to work because I don't need to be like, ta-da, you know? Um, so that's a one, right? So let's get into the strawberry letter. Um, Right. my sister told me she watched it and I said I'm a lot and I was smacking my lips and now again I'm thinking about it because y'all know I talk how I talk and then when somebody like mentions it then I'm like thinking about it so now when I'm talking I'm just like don't say um don't smack your lips but it's gonna happen it just is what it is at this point right but I'll try not to be um, 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 for y'all, right? So, here we go, story letter. So, I missed the beginning of it because, of course, school drop-offs. But I got the gist of it. So, this was written by a married woman who, um, five years ago, she was cheated on by her husband. And he, he, I guess he told her? I'm assuming he told her because um or, or he didn't tell her either she found out because she got some kind of disease and then she told him to get tested or he found out because he had disease and he told her to get tested i missed that part of it but I, I came in on somebody was told to get tested but in that time they continue living in the same house um the husband was still in the bed with her but she made him share the bathroom with her twin kids, their twin kids, um, but stayed married, right? And she's saying stuff like, oh, they never heard us argue. I hope they're having a happy childhood, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel like a lot of women, they feel like if like them and the husband don't work out, that the children have like this terrible childhood. But I would beg to differ. I would say that <clears throat> a happy home creates a happy childhood. Um, just because you're not together doesn't mean that both parents do not have to be involved. Um, I'm all for group outings. Like in the past, I had no problem going out with my ex and my kids. As his parents going out, there was nothing romantic there at all. But it was just of, okay, let us take them out because we're their parents. I have no issue with things like that. And I don't see why that can't happen. It doesn't always have to be like a toxic breakup or something volatile that um, is not beneficial to the kids. Because the issues that come when, when parents split is when you put the kids in between the split. You play the kids against like the other parent you make them choose sides and stuff like that i feel like that's where you have problems when parents split and then you should wonder about the quality of their childhood because you're not doing a good job creating a good one right so anyway so after a while she said that you know she had needs and she wanted to have sex and be loved on by a man. But obviously not her husband. Because I guess she's still in her feels. Which is, I guess it's fine. Because he kept saying that he she got an incurable disease. Again, I did not hear what it was. I'm not sure if she said what it was. But, you know, I'm not sure the severity of it. Or, you know, if it's something normal. Um. So, yeah. Um. 
And as I'm saying, um, for like the hundredth time, I'm remembering that she said I said um a lot. All right, let me try to stop this. But so fast forward, she said she need a man. She want to have sex. She want to be loved on. Um, so two years ago, she got a boyfriend. So we're saying he cheated five years ago. So three years after he cheated, she decided she wanted to be loved up on, and she got herself a boyfriend. Yo, it's mad boots on this street. Mad boots on these cars. Anyway, so her boyfriend was also married, but he wanted to get divorced. So I guess she felt like it was okay. I'm assuming that he thinks it's okay. Um, because how would they meet? Like, how would they even meet for that to start? You know, so maybe it was like a dating site or something. I'm not sure. But anyway, she meets this this married boyfriend and she's having a good time. And now my man wants her to leave her husband. Like he's pressing her to leave her husband. Like, you know, like I'm ready to get a divorce. You know, you should do the same thing and we could be together type thing. And Shirley is like, nah, um, you know, don't do it because he's still married, which I don't understand. If he's so ready and willing to get divorced, why has it been two years and he's not divorced? Like, he shouldn't be getting divorced for you. He should just be getting divorced because he said he wanted to get a divorce. Like, it shouldn't have anything to do with what she's doing. If you're ready to get a divorce, you should have been got it. It's been two years. Like, what are you waiting for? Did you start that process, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Because you could maybe be full of shit. Because, like, he shouldn't be waiting for her to leave her husband officially, to leave his wife officially. Like, if he wants to get a divorce, he needs to get a divorce. It shouldn't matter what the other party is doing, in my opinion, anyway, right? So, she's on some, oh, I know the grass, I know the saying, the grass isn't greener on the other side. So, she's thinking that it might not be better with this next man because she's just she's calling that the other side but my thing is that you've been with him for two years you kind of should have an idea of what to expect if you do enter into a relationship with this man granted he's a boyfriend and that you're not in a full-blown relationship but i feel like in two years even if you're meeting up just to have sex unless it's like a straight up booty call I assume you're hanging out, you're watching TV, you're doing little things, and you're getting to know each other. Um, and she's talking about, oh, it was only supposed to be a good time, this, that, and the third. But clearly, it's a little more than that, because why else would he be asking you, would he be asking you to leave your husband for him in that, um, in that respect? So clearly, it's a little bit more than sex. It's not like you're having sex and you're jump it up out the bed and you're running out the house or hotel or whatever y'all doing that's not happening so you're encouraging a relationship that you're not saying oh that that relationship doesn't exist what are you doing type thing and that's that's a mistake a lot of people make like they want to do like oh let's be friends with benefits let's be fuck buddies let's be this but then in that situation you kind of interject like dating things like relationshipy things so y'all are talking on the phone y'all are doing this y'all are doing that and friends with benefits you know i get that but that still makes you create feelings because you're creating a bond with the person fuck buddies in my opinion we're not talking we're not friends we're not doing any of that and that's why i've never been privy to this type of situation because I feel like it doesn't work out. Eventually, some shit is going to slip and it's going to be a, oh, hey, how you doing? You're going to start talking and all that good stuff. Unless unless y'all both are really just don't give a fuck and y'all have a lot of other things going on or whatever. Or y'all in another relationship, which I have to say I don't agree with. I'm not promoting that. But this is real life things happen and this is, these are the relationships that people have. So, unless you're both in another relationship, I feel like you're going to want to talk to that person outside of, hey meet up at eight o'clock this location must have sex have sex put your clothes on and run out the house or room or whatever i don't really see that happening if each person doesn't have someone else because you're going to eventually become that person's person whether you like it or not it just depends on how it goes and it might not even be both people it might happen on one side and not the other so 
I'm not a fan of these situations because I feel like somebody always catches feelings. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care what you think you're doing or not doing. I don't care what what you agreed upon prior to the fact. It always happens. Somebody's catching the feels. And that's when it becomes messy and emotional and you mess stuff up. Okay? So, back at the ranch. She's saying that it was only supposed to be this, that, and the third. And she's saying, oh, the grass is not always green on the other side. And Steve pointed out so eloquently that um, the grass is greener where you water it. So he's like, of course, the grass is greener where you at now because you're watering it. Like, ain't no grass in your marriage, okay? You're not watering it, sleeping in the same bed. You have no real type of relationship. You're basically roommates that share a bed. Um, you're not sleeping together. There's no intimacy. Y'all are probably not even friends. She didn't really go into that. But we're going to assume that you're not really even friends. You're probably just communicating for the sake of your children and your household. And there's no relationship there. So there is no grass there. So Steve is correct in saying that. And the grass is greener where you're watering it, which is where you are, which is what he said. And she's watering it clearly with her side dude, her boyfriend. And so the grass is definitely greener there. Um, <laughs> so I keep wanting to say, um, oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna try to do better, but I feel like this might just be the way that I talk if I'm talking for a long time. <sighs> So long story short, my girl got cheated on. She waited three years. She got a boyfriend. She's been with her boyfriend for two years. Her boyfriend is also married. Her boyfriend done caught all the feels and is pressing her to leave her marriage. And she's making up, you know, all kinds of excuses as to why she can't leave when in theory she already left. She's no longer in her marriage. She just has to figure that out. Um he's not divorced yet which i'm not understanding why because if you if i met you two years ago and you was pressed to get divorced you should have been divorced by now granted i know these things take time but have you even started the process and all that good stuff like what's what's the hold up here so um shirley is saying that she shouldn't do it because he's still married and steve is saying that she should just go for it and everybody get a divorce and what have you and Shirley's like well he can get a divorce first which I get I get her um I get her thinking but for me I don't think it really makes sense in this situation because they're already in a relationship so she needs to leave her husband in my opinion right so the fact that she's still married or he's still married is irrelevant to this letter because she's been married the whole two years that they've been together. He's been married the whole two years that they've been together. So they're both two married individuals in a whole relationship, it seems. And a lot of people tend to be able to be like, oh, this is not a relationship, but you're doing relationship things, which is what I think is happening. And I feel like... Um, that's the reason that my man is like oh leave your husband because i feel like he feels like they're in a relationship together and he wants to make it like officially in a relationship but they're probably just relationshipy without the titles and stuff like that which makes sense because they're both married so in my opinion i feel like if she wants to be with this man if she doesn't want to be with this man, whatever she wants to do, she needs to get a divorce. He also needs to get a divorce. Like they both need to get a divorce. Whether or not they end up together, the fact that they're both living lives outside of their marriages shows the marriage is over. Like why am I still married if I'm having a life outside of my marriage that does not include my husband? or wife it does not make sense so personally speaking everybody needs to get a divorce i cannot see because there's a big old truck here blocking me and these cars are speeding down this block like i don't know what the hell is going on and i'm not trying to make my insurance premium go up 
so here we go um yeah so that's how i feel how y'all feel about it so i think everybody needs to get a divorce i think they could figure out if they want to be together now it doesn't the divorce doesn't have to happen because i feel like they've been in a relationship for two years already so what difference does it make if they continue in this relationship without getting divorced first but I think they both need to get divorced regardless. But I think she needs to make up her mind. And if she does not want a long-term relationship with this man, she needs to leave him alone. That's it. Like, and I feel like a lot of a lot of people do this. They don't want a relationship with the person, but they like what they have going on. And even though the person says that they want a relationship and they know they don't want it, they still want to continue what they have going on, which sends mixed messages. Because the person who's in their relationship, we'll call it a relationship because everything is a relationship. If you interact with someone, it's a relationship, whether it be just a friendship, a romantic relationship, a platonic relationship, just a purely sexual relationship. It's all relationships, right? So you're in a relationship with someone a sexual relationship and make it clear so y'all don't be like well that's not a relationship it's a relationship okay like i said you're in a sexual relationship with someone and the other party expresses that they want to be something more they want to um you know like go together <laughs> So they want to lock it down. They want to make it official. However you want to say it, they want to be in a relationship. And the thing is that whatever you've been doing up until that point, we're going to assume that there's some kind of communication and some kind of friendly ship going on. So I'm assuming it's not a hop in the bed, hop out. Granted, people do catch feelings off of just sex and want to be like, let's get married because you, you like the sex, which is dumb. But it does happen. But I feel like in this type of situation, I'm going to make the assumption that they're actually in some type of relationship um, where they're having a sexual relationship and they have some type of friendship or a personal relationship as well, we should put it, we'll say. Um, so in my opinion, she needs to figure out if she wants to be with this man. If she doesn't, she needs to let him know. And she needs to stop having sex with him. But I feel like she does not want to stop having sex with him because she's enjoying herself. And I feel like she wants to stay married and be in this relationship because she does not know if the relationship is going to work. But sadly, friends, this is the way life works. We do not know if relationships are going to work out. Unfortunately, it would be nice if we knew if a relationship was going to work out when we got into it. But then there will be less divorces, less single parents, less a lot of dumb shit if we knew beforehand if it was going to work out. So we don't have that luxury of meeting someone and being like, oh, this, this shit's going to work. If we did, don't y'all think more people would be in different relationships? Like a half of the people together right now would not be together because you have that little crystal ball thing going yeah not gonna work and it's just like oh my god that's amazing granted that little crystal ball sometimes is called a red flag and we like to ignore those not anymore though y'all not anymore i learned my lesson i learned my lesson no more benefit of the doubts no more oh yeah what you saying kind of makes sense none of that what i see is what i get so what you show me is what i'm taking i don't care what i'm hearing from you I don't care none of that no more i'm looking at black and white facts and yes it will make me a more difficult person to deal with because i'm not gonna take your bullshit so if you're a bullshitter you're gonna have a problem with me but if you're not it should be great because like i said i'm amazing um but yeah so i'm going off on a tangent so i'm gonna end this right here because we we're about to hit 20 minutes but let me know what y'all think about the strawberry letter. Chime in. And anything else that I mentioned too. Like y'all agree, disagree. Because y'all know I just be talking. And I was definitely supposed to go live. But I never went live before. And I don't think I should try it for the first time while I'm driving. So that's why I'm just going to pre-record this. And I'm going to post it when I get to the office in about... Well, I'll post it in about 20-ish minutes or so. But yeah. Alright y'all. Bye.